All right, uh, we talked about constant volume calorimetry and I, uh, I showed you at least a picture uh, explaining how the apparatus for that was, was a little bit uh, complicated, right? We need this uh, very strong uh, container to keep the volume fixed. Uh, the other way to do a reaction and still have some control over what's going on is to do it at constant pressure. Right. Uh, constant pressure is much easier to achieve. It just says we do the reaction in an open container, right? Uh, because if our reaction uh, makes gas or consumes gas, it's not going to make or consume enough gas to change the pressure uh, in, uh, in a room or in the, the, the surroundings, right? And so the pressure is going to hold constant pretty much no matter what our reaction does then. Excuse me. Uh, there's a calorimetry experiment scheduled to be, I think, the last experiment this semester uh, in uh, the 117 labs. Uh, and so it'll be still a little while, but you will see that at some point. Uh, calorimetry done at constant pressure, the thing we can measure then is, is still heat, right? We can still measure the temperature change, use the heat capacities to get the heat. Uh, this one, now we're going to call it Q sub P, uh, where the P just means constant pressure, the same as uh, I used Q sub V uh, in the constant volume case, right? So the question is uh, that Q sub P, it is measurable, but is it good for anything, right? Uh, it's, uh, is it equal to delta E? Uh, can it be converted to delta E? What, uh, what can we do with it? So let's take a look. Uh, here are uh, a, uh, first, we'll point out that uh, Q sub P is, is not any longer equal to delta E, right? Uh, delta E uh, is equal to Q plus W. Uh, w is minus P delta V. So I can say that uh, this thing is still delta E, right? When we were at constant volume, I said, well, the piece delta V term went to zero, uh, and therefore uh, delta E was just equal to Q, right? Uh, if the pressure is constant, uh, and if delta T is not zero, then and particularly in the case where there are gases involved in my reaction, uh, then delta V is, is likely not zero, right? Uh, because uh, if I'm, I'm changing the uh, temperature uh, while the reaction happens, uh, then uh, the gases are going to want to change volume to make things work out and hold the pressure constant, right? Uh, in that situation, then, uh, the work uh, at constant pressure is not going to necessarily be equal to zero. And so I can no longer say that delta E is equal to Q, right? Uh, so Q sub P does not give me a value for delta E, right? That's not terribly surprising, right, uh, that uh, the Q value is different uh, in the case of uh, constant pressure versus constant volume, uh, but uh, that, that is the result. So that leaves us wondering, like, what can I do with this uh, Q sub P value, right? Uh, there are a lot of reactions that happen at constant pressure under, under uh, regular application situations, so uh, the idea that we could measure the heat there is probably still a useful thing. So what we do to make this a useful concept is we, we define, we make up basically a new thermodynamic state function, right? Uh, specifically, we want to design a function uh, that will be a state function, a property only of the, the state of the system, uh, such that the change in my new property is equal to Q sub P, right? Q sub P, Q is still not a state function, right? Because it it's depends on the, the pathway we took, how we did the reaction, uh, in this case that we did it at constant pressure, right? Uh, this new function that I'm making, which in the top line there I've just referred to as the, uh, the nebulous question mark, uh, this function is uh, known as enthalpy, uh, and uh, it gets the symbol H, uh, which uh, I believe is, is uh, from the German form of the word for heat. Okay, uh, And so uh, the definition of enthalpy is that H is equal to E plus P times V. Okay, uh, that definition is put together because it should lead to the result that delta H is equal to Q sub P. Uh, let's go ahead and prove that delta H, where H is uh, E plus PV, uh, does in fact come out to be Q sub P. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of uh, just uh, uh, proof work here. Okay, uh, first of all, the uh, enthalpy has to be a state function, right? We said we wanted a state function. Uh, H is the lone thing on the left-hand side. E, P, and V on the right-hand side are all state functions. So if everything on the right side is a state function and there's only one thing on the left, then, then H must be a state function just from there, okay? Uh, that part we can see right away because if E and P and V don't depend on the path, then the right-hand side doesn't depend on the path and therefore the, the left-hand side uh, cannot depend on the path. Is delta H equal to Q sub P? That's my next task, right? Delta H is equal to delta E plus uh, the change delta PV, right? Uh, what I might uh, say there, 
And then uh, I can say that uh, delta PV, if P is constant, uh, this is like taking the derivative, right? Treat the delta just like you're taking the derivative of something in math. Uh, if pressure is constant, that's like if you're taking the derivative of 3x squared, right? The constant piece gets pulled through the derivative. In this case, that means the P gets pulled through the delta. So I get delta E is, uh, or delta PV rather, is equal to P delta V, right? So now I have delta H equal to delta E plus P delta V. Uh, let's take that and let's bring it up here to my next, uh, my next slide where I have some room to do some things with it, okay? Uh, we have the uh, P delta V piece in there and we have, uh, we have delta E, right? Uh, we can uh, now take delta E uh, and say delta E is equal to Q plus W, right? Uh, that's what that line does. That just says uh, delta E is Q plus W, right? That's the first law. So that's still true. Next up from there, I can realize that I have W here and I have P delta V over there, right? W, remember uh, the pressure is constant. And so that means that the work W is equal to minus P delta V, okay? Uh, so now I'm gonna take that minus P delta V and uh, deposit it in there where the W is. If I do that, uh, now my, uh, what used to be delta E is now Q minus P delta V. I get plus delta V, plus P delta V. Uh, and that means the P delta V is there will, uh, will uh, sum to zero. And so I get uh, that delta H is equal to Q. And that's what I wanted, right? Because I did this, uh, I said pressure was constant. That's what I did on the bottom of the previous slide uh, when I turned uh, delta PV, the change in pressure times volume into pressure times the change in volume. I can only do that if P is constant, right? So my uh, constraint applies that P is constant uh, and I have delta H equal to Q sub P. Okay, uh, that just proves that uh, the, the Germans a long time ago who made up uh, the, the enthalpy function did it right uh, and uh, got a function that does correspond, uh, the change in it corresponds to the heat at constant pressure. Uh, that's, uh, that's the change in enthalpy and that's something we very often measure. What's the difference between delta E and delta H? They both have energy units, right? Uh, they, uh, because uh, delta H has a delta E there and it's, uh, right hand side, right? Delta H is delta E plus P delta V. The P delta V term uh, is uh, from expansion or compression, right? Uh, so if my reaction takes place at constant pressure, if I have only solids and liquids involved, then any change in volume should be very small, right? Uh, if I somehow do a reaction that has nothing that uh, is, is in the gas phase, then I don't expect the volume to change very much. So delta H and delta E turn out to be very close to the same actual value for, for things that are, we could, if we're being fancy, call condensed phase systems. That means uh, nothing in the gas phase. If I have gases in my reaction, and especially if I have different numbers of moles of gas on the two sides of the equation, uh, then the difference between delta H and delta E can get to be significant, okay? Uh, and that's just because uh, if I'm generating a gas, for example, my volume is gonna be increasing noticeably. If I'm using up gas, if I have a gas phase reactant and not product, then the volume uh, will probably be shrinking, right? If I turn a gas into solid or liquid, it's gonna always lose volume. Okay, uh, so in uh, systems involving gases, it's usually true that delta H and delta E will not be uh, that close to the same number. They do typically, they, they, they likely have the same signs. I'd be hard pressed to conjure up an idea where uh, I shifted from be being, you know, uh, uh, going in to coming out for my energy flow uh, for uh, changing from E to H. I don't think I can think of any examples that would do that. Because lots of reactions occur at constant pressure, pretty much anything that's open to the air, so anything out in the environment, uh, things going on in your body generally occur at constant pressure, so biochemists, uh, a lot of uh, useful applications are at constant pressure, okay? So delta H is a widely used quantity. It's actually used more often than delta E. Right, delta E to me is conceptually simpler because it's just, this is the total energy content of that collection of particles. Uh, but uh, it's actually not as uh, widely used, okay? So when people say a reaction is exothermic or endothermic, more often than not, they're looking at delta H as the thing they're deciding that by. Uh, same idea, right? Uh, if delta H is negative, that means my reaction uh, is releasing heat. Q uh, sub T is, is negative, right? Uh, that means heat's coming out. That means the reaction is exothermic. If delta H is positive, that means heat's being absorbed. The reaction is endothermic. The flow is into uh, the reacting system, okay? Uh, so the same uh, directionality and conventions apply there. 